The views expressed by the host in this program are the result of a daily, relentless, unstoppable pursuit of the truth. And we find it. And we proclaim it, and it drives liberals nuts. And thus, it's a lot of fun to do. Look forward to talking to you. We'll get your calls in in this hour relatively quick. The uh, number is 800-282-2882. The email address, lrushbo at eibnet.com. With his jobs plan purposely stymied in Congress. Because Democrats in the Senate will not vote for it. Of course, that's not how this story is actually written. In the New York Times, it says, with his jobs plans stymied in Congress by Republican opposition. And that's the purpose. It is supposed to be stymied. It is not supposed to be signed into law. They'll take it if they can get it. Don't misunderstand. But the whole point of this is to portray the Republicans as obstructionist. So with the jobs plan stymied, President Obama said today that he's going to begin a series of executive branch actions to confront housing, education, and other economic problems over the coming months, heralded by a new mantra, we can't wait for lawmakers to act. By the way, I have a question. We've got... I meant to ask this in the first hour. we got Sharia law now that's going to be imposed in uh, Libya. What does that mean for rapes? Will there be fewer rapes or more rapes? Are there going to be fewer or more cops on the street in Libya? Well, I was just thinking, you know, if you're a teacher, if you're a rape victim... If you're a rapist, if you're a murderer, purse snatcher, and you're listening to Obama and Biden run around and try to sell this jobs bill, don't you ask yourself, well, wait a minute now, uh, I thought we stopped all the rapes and purse snatchings and muggings with the first stimulus. We should have wiped out rape. That was $787 billion worth of spending, and we got that. Now, we're talking $35 billion to eliminate rape. Still haven't any calls from a rape. We did last week on Friday, we got a call from a hitman. A friend of a hitman, a friend of a hitman, who uh, who said that he was the, the, the hitman eagerly following the vote. And was facing the possibility of outsourcing his work to Europe. If the, uh, if the law passed. So we're going to lose jobs. We're going to lose some jobs in America. The hitman didn't work alone. He's got a support staff. I mean, hitmen, you just don't know. You, you don't look up hitmen in the yellow pages or on the web and say, Get, find me the, like I could ask my, my phone, find me the nearest hitman. Let's, in fact, see what happens. Let's just see what happens here. Find me the nearest hitman in uh, the state of Florida. I don't know what you mean by find me the nearest hitman in the state of Florida. Okay, see, they're not found. You, you, you can't find them. That's the whole point. So they have to have support people that you get hold of. If you want to use a hitman, you got to know who to call to get hold of the hitman because a hitman even fools the iPhone 4S. So, uh, well, but if you, okay, let's try that. Let's just see. Um, do this. Hi, give me a uh, list of exterminators within 10 miles of my current location. Let's see what it does here. Checking your location. I found a number of pest control services within 10 miles of here. Well, pest control. See, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for hitmen. Nice try, HR, but that's how hard they are to get hold of. But even so, this one guy said that he was going to be leaving if the bill passed. So now here's Obama. You're probably thinking I lost my place. I have it. Here's Obama. Frustrated Congress won't pass it. Now he's looking for executive branch ways just to get this done without needing 
to go through Congress at all because the plan is stymied there. And they've got a new mantra, we can't wait for lawmakers to act. And according to an administration official, Obama will kick off his new offensive in Las Vegas, ground zero for the housing bust, by proposing, uh, promoting new rules for federally guaranteed mortgages so that more homeowners, those with little or no equity in their homes, can refinance and avert foreclosure. Now, we have an audio soundbite here. What this is is an ad the Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee put together an ad. It's on their website. It's a video montage featuring an unidentified woman, several unidentified news reporters, Pelosi's part of it, Obama's part of it, Dingy Harry, uh, Representative Shelley Berkeley, Democrat from Nevada, and the mayor of Las Vegas, Oscar Goodman, talking. And the it's, it's a series of photos of abandoned homes and general squalor on the screen. So as you listen to this, imagine that you are seeing abandoned homes and general squalor. And now this is the Republicans running the ad. It was a tragedy, unlike anything I'd ever seen. It's $830 billion stimulus. Nine and a half billion dollars in new regulations just last month. We have to pass the bill so that you can find out what is in it. President Obama will be in Las Vegas. Nevada's unemployment rate is the highest for the 16th straight month at 13.4%. And the home foreclosure rate is also the worst in the nation. We've begun to see progress all across the country. Private sector jobs have been doing just fine. Nevada has gotten more help than any other well, state. Sure. You can't go take a trip to Las Vegas. Don't blow a bunch of cash on Vegas. He owes us an apology. He owes us a retraction. Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley is named in this year's list of most corrupt politicians. So this is a Republican ad that's actually pretty good because the picture is squandered, abandoned homes, uh, and, and all around general squalor pass you by on the screen, and you get a direct hit. On Obama, Pelosi, Reid, Shelley, Berkeley, uh, I think this is what the Republicans ought to be doing. Going right after the Democrats, not pussyfooting around, but going right after them. What this ad does is accuse these Democrats of this problem in Las Vegas. And Obama did say the days of getting on your plane and going to Las Vegas are over. And he said that within the first, what, month of his administration. And he told us, by the way, he was going to do this. Let's go back. October 11th, he was in Pittsburgh, and this was at a crowd of 200 people versus a crowd of 10 to 12,000 in 2008. 200 people, mainly teachers and union people. American Jobs Act that I'm putting forward obviously contains many ideas like infrastructure investment that should be pretty straightforward. And our hope is, is that we're able to get those passed in the next couple of months. So my instruction to Jeff and Gene and Valerie and all the advisors who are sitting around the table is scour this report, identify all those areas in which we can act administratively without additional congressional authorization, and just get it done. Anything that's within our authority to do as an administration, we start doing immediately, and we don't wait for Congress. We don't wait for Congress. So on October 11th, this is what he said he was going to do. So I have a piece here from the Business Insider revealed, here is Obama's new housing plan. Federal Housing Finance Agency has just announced its changes to the Home Affordable Refinance Program called HARP, which serves as the backbone to Obama's new housing plan. HARP programs have helped 894,000 borrowers through August, which is a far cry from the 3 to 4 million Obama promised in 2009. None of these plans have worked. This is just the latest one. The changes are designed to allow more underwater homeowners with loans backed by the government to take advantage of lower interest rates. This time, the Federal Housing Finance Agency is not providing a specific estimate for the number of homeowners it believes it can help under the new program. Just says by the end of 2013, HARP refinances may roughly double or more from the current amount. 
So, again, what we have here is the impression of some help taking place. The impression, the optics of the regime moving in to help people in foreclosure who are underwater on their mortgages. They don't tell us how many they're going to help. They predicted three to four million. Eight hundred some odd thousand have been assisted. But, but, but in truth, the programs have all been failures. There are still foreclosures taking place. There are still abandoned houses. In some neighborhoods, abandoned houses are being bulldozed. The federal government cannot fix this problem. Obama doesn't care if it gets fixed. All Obama wants is for you to think it's being addressed. So a new program. Well, how many uh, how many homes, how many homeowners are going to be? We don't know here. It'd be probably double, triple the current number. The principal change says here is the elimination of the 125% loan to value ceiling for refinances allowing all homeowners to refinance if they meet other eligibility criteria no matter how far their home value has fallen so basically they are going to tell anybody that uh, no matter what your circumstance you qualify to refinance at practically zero interest rates. And they're going to make the participation in the program voluntary, which is why so few people are participating in the programs up to this point. Now, this we can't wait business cuts two ways, folks. Obama is trying to get the aggrieved, the downtrodden, the underwater, the foreclosed upon to agree with him, just go around Congress, forget the Constitution, forget the Republic, forget the democratic process. We can't wait. It's too important. We got to do it ourselves. But we can't wait either. We can't wait to repeal Obamacare. We can't wait to repeal Dodd-Frank. We can't wait to cut spending, to balance the budget. We can't wait to end all these Democrat Party money laundering schemes. We can't wait to get all the facts on facts and furious. We can't wait to get rid of Eric Holder, to rein in the EPA. We can't wait to cut taxes on job creators. We can't wait to make this radical, leftist, divisive, failed president a one-termer. We can't wait to have voter ID laws in all 57 states. We can't wait for Joe Biden to make his next speech. We really look forward to that. We can't wait for Muchel, my bell, Obama, to mind her own business. When it comes to what we eat. And we really can't wait for these Occupy Wall Street protesters to bathe and get the stench of urine off of themselves. 